Respiration now. So aerobic respiration involves the use of oxygen. The word equation is oxygen plus glucose goes to carbon dioxide plus water plus the release of energy. Remember the energy is always released. It's never produced. Make sure you can write the symbol equation as well. So sixes are important here with the balancing. You want 6O2 plus C6H12O6, which is the formula of glucose, goes to 6CO2 plus 6H2O. Although energy is released, ATP is made. This is adenosine triphosphate. ATP is made from adenosine diphosphate, ADP plus an extra phosphate. And it's this ATP which is used to transfer the energy. Energy is released from ATP by its conversion back to ADP and the phosphate. We say that the ATP has been hydrolyzed. What is this energy released by respiration used to do? Well, it's used to help us contract muscles, move substances, by active transport, carry out assimilation, which is building up large molecules from small molecules. It's also used in cell division as well as the manufacture of more organelles found within our cells. We've already said that we need oxygen for aerobic respiration. How does oxygen enter our body? Well, it enters through an inhalation, that's a breath in. The oxygen actually enters our blood in our lungs. Remember that general atmospheric air contains around 20% oxygen. It's mostly made up of nitrogen with some argon gas, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. If we compare air that we breathe in, so that's inhaled air, compared with air that we breathe out, exhaled air, it makes sense that we absorb oxygen into our bodies. So therefore, exhaled air will contain less oxygen because carbon dioxide is produced by respiration, exhaled air will contain more carbon dioxide and more water vapour. So make sure that it makes sense to you. If you look at the equation for aerobic respiration, exhaled air must therefore contain more CO2, more water and less oxygen. Hydrogen carbonate indicator can be used to demonstrate how much carbon dioxide is present. So atmospheric air contains around 0.04% carbon dioxide. This turns hydrogen carbonate indicator orange. So if you see that that indicator is orange, you can say that there's around 0.04% CO2. High levels of CO2 turn the indicator yellow. Low levels of CO2 turn the indicator a red purple color. Anaerobic respiration can occur if there's insufficient or a lack of oxygen. Here the glucose is incompletely broken down and it actually releases less energy and produces less ATP compared with aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is carried out by yeast cells as well as our muscle cells if we experience intense periods of exercise. When yeast anaerobically respires, it takes that glucose and converts it into ethanol and carbon dioxide. This process is actually used in the bread making industry to help bread dough rise. The ethanol produced is used in the alcoholic drinks industry, so to make beer and wines. When our muscles anaerobically respire, this time the glucose is converted to lactate. Anaerobic respiration can cause muscle fatigue over time, and that's due to what's known as an oxygen debt. It means that when you stop exercising, your breathing rate stays high, and the reason for that is because you need to introduce more oxygen into our body in order to break down the lactate produced by anaerobic respiration.